So it's investigating the city where every drug is legal. This is, it. This is Portland, Oregon, the city where every drug is legal. Drug addiction, homelessness, crime. Perhaps a few side effects of decriminalizing every drug. Or so I think. Okay, okay. This is a government experiment gone wrong. But how did this all happen and what can be done to fix it? So I met up with Kevin, a social worker born and raised in Portland whose life mission is to save this city before it's too late. I'm uh, born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I've worked in social services a couple decades now, primarily working with the homeless. I have watched as this has grown into to a legitimate crisis. I believe we can solve this with just applying a little bit of common sense, a little effort, and a lot of passion. Those are two fentanyl users right there. So we're, we're already in kind of the heart of it. In this one block radius, there's user, at least huh? 50 camps. You're gonna see a lot of overdoses out here. I carry Narcan, which is an opioid blocker. Because of Measure 110, this decriminalized all drug use, it's now just an open air drug scene. Well, smash and grabs are very common in Portland. We have a lawlessness city now. We have cops that can't even pursue. They're not even really allowed it's to because it's not huh? serious enough. And we're gonna walk past the Chinese garden here to an encampment. Uh, in any major encampment, there's a mayor, which is a homeless person who's in charge of the encampment. Who I'm gonna inter introduce you to one of the mayors. Be a little discreet with the camera until we say hi. So I don't know these two, yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, could be dangerous. Okay. okay. Yeah, you guys are right. That's all night. Alright, well then, we walk, and we walk away. That's just dangerous. Well, I've been here longer than you, brother. Hey, man, I'm Kevin. Oh, Kevin is bold right now. TV! Oh, did he move? He's actually insane. Let's go. You are the boldest man I've ever met. Oh, I'm going to be honest. So what it appears is that we have a leadership change. And I, I noticed that right away because I didn't recognize them. The new mayor's been reelected. Either oh. he's been reelected or he just took the office. You know? What was the likelihood of him using I this? That, I guess. Yeah, I'd, I'd say there was a high likelihood. Yeah. He, he did have his knife out and luckily we got away. Yeah, I've been here multiple times the last couple years uh, and I've built Actually a really keeps going into the night. these people. Nice. I, I've only been gone here for a week. Uh, I know of a homeless camp that's about a mile and a half from here and a guy has shotguns in the trees where if you step the wrong place, it's going to shoot you. And this was the moment I realized Kevin is insane. How many other times have you been assaulted? I've been stabbed twice. I've been punched multiple times. I've had needles mm -hmm. uh, shoved into my back, hypodermic needles, so I had to get tested for HIV. I had a guy try to cut my head off with a machete last year. He chased me full speed. And the only reason I lived is because I dove last second as he swung. And after we called the police and he was arrested, he said, I was trying to kill you because I wanted to murder by the police. So I got hit once. He was upset I was filming him. The reason why I was filming him is because he was committing a crime, right? Punched me again, knocked me to the ground, uh, got hit in the head, got kicked, and then he walked away. He was... Guy, yeah. You know, they're hearing voices, command voices that might say, I need to kill Tyler. After hearing how many times Kevin's nearly been killed out here doing this, we went downtown to talk to some drug addicts to figure out how this all happened. So what's going on here? Is this fentanyl use? Well, I'm going to go talk yeah, with my friend. What is he Stripping, potentially. Hey, I'm with my friends. I was wondering if you would want to talk to him for a second for $5. Is this something you would want to do, dear? No? Okay. So this is, uh, you know, she is severely mentally ill. Yeah, She's holding exactly. a fentanyl pipe, and as you see, her oh. pants are completely down. Oh, I see. I did not notice that. And yeah. you know, she really is someone who needs serious mental health treatment and okay. it's not she's not getting it out here so fentanyl has completely replaced almost all other drugs yeah. it got really popular the last couple of years started i think we think in philadelphia origin point is philadelphia kensington where we went uh, that's what we believe trink and fetty really started there we just because you use needles so what's going on here he seems to be symptomatic so i'll go say hi to him and see if i can yeah. offer him a cigarette right? these two people are symptomatic yeah, and right in front of, you know, a bar and grill. No bar and grill. Oh, a lot of sure pick up this around here are closed down because of the crime, because of the drug use. This is my friend Tyler. How you doing? I see you're holding a fentanyl straw. Do you want to share with me uh, when you started using fentanyl? Uh... Almost everybody on the streets now are using fentanyl. Are they really? Yeah. How long you been out here? A while. I don't remember exactly how long. Okay. Well, let me ask you, is anybody out here helping you get off the streets? I don't have any sense of time. Take care yourself, man. How you doing, sir? So you're doing fentanyl right now, yeah? I was loading some speed. Right? Do you do any other drugs besides speed? Yeah, I mean, I do drugs. Usually. Okay, what are we talking here? Fentanyl? Mushrooms. LSD. 
I like MDMA, MDA, uh, 2CB, 2C7, 2CI, 2CE. That's a lot of drugs. Mm, that's a lot. Of approaching you and offering help, you know, like outreach workers. So you feel like no one's really giving you help out here? When you're homeless, you, uh, you have to, like, have a, a house to get a job. Sure. You can't do it the other way around. You have to shower yeah. before work. Right. You have to know that you're going to be able to sleep and get up that time. Are you afraid to be out here at night? I mean, sometimes, like, a week ago, I was sleeping in my sleeping bag, and yeah. I set up someone yelling at me, and he started socking me in the face. I couldn't walk the other day, and they took me to the hospital, and they, like, kicked me out. And I had an episode where I couldn't even get up at the hospital. And they're just like, bye. I felt very underwhelmed and underappreciated. The people Hold on. out here. He's breathing unnaturally. You okay, brother? It's impossible yeah, to listen without the subtitles. He's falling asleep. He deep breathes. Okay. And like seriously, um, yeah. these cold nights that we've had, yeah. if people weren't high out here, they'd die. Of the situation for these homeless seemed brutal, but how did Portland get to this point? As we walked around the corner, I saw another guy injecting a needle into his arm. Jay. Jay My name's Tyler, Jay. Good to meet you. Jay, what are you shooting up here? Xylazine? No. No? They're old fashioned white boy meth. Got it. How long have you been out here? How long have you been homeless in Portland? I've been homeless since 96. So 1996. Okay. Jay, how dangerous it is, is it out here on these streets? It's gotten a lot worse. This, just in the last year, I've seen three different shootings where somebody's been shot and killed. Hey, brother. How you guys doing? Number one thing. I said 22, yes. Housing? 17,000 ghost houses in this city. And most are telling us that no one's out here really approaching you all. Still it, everybody. Stop. You have people steal from you? Oh, yeah. 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 Rapid response? response? They are the worst. Oh, Rapid oh, response oh, goes oh, into oh, people's oh, camps, oh, gives them 72 oh, hours to get out. Oh, and if they're not out in that 72 hours, they take everything they own. And they gotta start over again. There shouldn't be anybody homeless right now. Three point two billion dollars. If I had that money, I bought all those houses and gave it every person that needed a home a home. Once you give them the home, what happens next with the drug price? That's up to them. It's gonna take at least five years for them to get adjusted. Okay, so what if they don't pay their bills and they fall further into addiction and use the homes or destroy it? That's the risk with dealing with humans. I'm an addict. Yeah. I've been out here uh, forty eight years homeless off and on. While the homeless here clearly felt left behind by the city. What led to so many of them ending up on the streets in the first place? Have a great day. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, hey, brother. Does your family know you're here? No? Okay. How old are you? You're 22? Okay. Yeah. But you know, you can recover th from this. You know this, right? You know how to get into a shelter? Let's try to go into a shelter tonight and see how it works. Will you? Please. With a 22 year old kid on the streets barely able to speak anymore, common sense would argue drugs have an obvious and major role in this homelessness crisis. But what is the city doing to help this? So, Kevin, you said the shelters, so there are places these people could go to. The shelters, you get stolen from more in the shelters than you do out here. You live in a tent in a park, or you go to a shelter where there's 91 bunk beds and one large room with no air conditioning, where people are coughing all night. There's some people living right under here, and I just want to introduce you to them if they're still here. So, it Damn, is. It's it smells immediately like I know. Hey there, how you doing, man? I noticed you have a suitcase. Is that what you use to carry all your things and you move from place to place every night? Yes, 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 yes. How easy is it to get your hands on fentanyl out here? Oh, crazy. And you know what this is, of course. Yes. Have you ever had to use one of these on yourself or someone else? Or? Yeah, somebody's had to use it on me like five times. How many times have you tried to quit? No, I, I need to be really honest with you. This isn't going to last. You're not going to last another year or two out here, brother. I know, I'm done. You'll be dead in a year if you don't stop. You know this, right? Please. Would you go into a shelter, or go into treatment, or detox? I, I, go, I go to shelters. I mean, there's a shelter right here. I, I, I know where it is. Okay, right on. So we find we see yeah. a lot of people in wheelchairs with the uh, un unable to walk that are stuck out here homeless. Okay. And they're, of course, the ones being victimized more than anybody. They're assaulted because they can't chase them, run away, any of sure. that. And that's very common, sadly. Kevin, what is this right here? Blanchett House of Hospitality? Blanchett has been offering food to the homeless for decades. Okay. Look, I'm all about helping a person meet their basic needs, but let me ask you this. Yep. If you feed a person 10 years in a row, have you done them any good? Yeah, you got to teach a man to fish. And out of nowhere, we heard this in the distance. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually true. This is neglect. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. So let's go. So how often do you hear gunshots out here? And who just got blipped? Well, well that's kind of dangerous. Someone just got shot, you think? I don't know, but that was a gunshot. Okay, you're used to it. Well, yeah, I mean, you hear him. This pointed at us? 
Okay. It did actually come from the camp we were kicked out of an hour ago when the guy pulled the knife on us. You know, murders are common out here. I mean, one way to get away with a murder out here is to call it an overdose. This happened to one of my clients recently, is they put two fentanyl pills in his drink, and he, did, he wasn't a user and died of an overdose. It was, you know, the fentanyl powder and they put it in his drink. Actually, they did it sort of as a joke. He overdosed and died. So we're not gonna get fentanyl overdosed? There is a 60% um, chance that's not gonna happen. Uh, and you have Narcan in case I touch it or Pasha touches it or you touch yeah, it? Yeah, 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 I'm prepared. But tell me about decriminalization of drug use in Portland. <sighs> Portland, or really the state of Oregon, decided to decriminalize drugs was because some had argued that we shouldn't make drug use punitive and that we need to offer treatment. And that sounds great. But Portland took inspiration from places like Portugal and the Netherlands, places that successfully decriminalized drugs. But the big difference between them and Portland is that they had rehabilitation systems in place that they proved to work before they did it. Kevin thinks that Portland, 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 Portland. recovery, detox, treatment, Treatment. All that stuff that they promised really isn't happening. A person who is using drugs Shitting. oftentimes have gone through a, a trauma. And so what they lack is rational thinking. And so people who already have make poor choices are unable to really stop using anyway. But now you give them the freedom to use as much as they want. Sure. And that's terrifying. But why did the people of Portland vote for this? So we went to Fentanyl Fountain to ask the locals their opinion on the decriminalization of drugs. This is the fountain. Now, Fentanyl of Fountain? Course, any other day of the week, it's going to be a completely different scene here. They, Does it get uh, worse throughout the week? Yeah, they come here Friday night and just and sweep everybody and clean it up. Yeah, and then the vendors come here and, you know, set, set up shop. How long have you been out here in Portland? Almost 20 years. You were here from before and after York. decriminalization? I was. Okay. I was. And I, I, it got progressively worse for a number of years, but um, they're definitely cutting the meth with fentanyl because there'd be people running around that were really happy in the morning just losing their sh the afternoon. Yeah. How does this place change after today? There are quite a lot of okay. wandering people who don't have homes that do spend a lot of okay. time here. Definitely have seen um, a lot of downtown businesses really struggling, not necessarily with the legalization of drugs, but just people camping in their doorway. Um, have you been in Portland for many years? Oh, my whole life. Okay, yes. got it. So you've seen Portland before decriminalization and after? Sure. Have you seen any impact on downtown? or? Okay. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Oh, okay. You too. Okay, we're noticing some general resilience. What but, the uh, hell? There is because sure. about 60% of the people voted for this uh, measure. See. They're not going to change their opinion. I feel like the decriminalization nice of drugs yeah. turned into the decriminalization of crime. You know, when you need help, it's the police don't show up. Do you support the decriminalization of drugs here? Yeah, of course I do because it's no longer uh, like... The jails aren't filling up the junkies. Well, Got it, okay. Yes. Drugs aren't bad, they're just preferred for the people that can properly use them. Do you use drugs harder than weed out here? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I take breaks. Okay. Yeah, not everyone can do that. Out here, yeah, I mean, people are still dying. So, I died last week. So you I'm got hit with an Narcan or? Yes. You died? Does it work very well? Said it didn't work. I had to have an injectable. Okay. And you almost died? I did die. Oh, you died and you were brought back. Does that scare you or does it lead you to be like, damn, I should stop using or is it just so I hard? I don't think to, I, to I can speak. All three. Yeah, we, we've both died a couple times, so that's why we, we've chosen not to mess with fentanyl anymore. Sure. Hi there. My name's Catherine. I'm currently unhoused because my wallet, ID, and phone were stolen a few months ago. It is impossible to get an ID uh, when you are homeless. And I want to work a job. I want to live inside. I was thrown out of my parents' house. I didn't use. They kicked me out for being queer and openly coming out to them. And then I had one argument with her. I told her to F off. The next day, she bought me a Greyhound ticket, sent me here. I have nothing. It's been three months since then. I was reported missing by someone on my TikTok right, account. Not by them. They know where I am. They sent me here to be homeless, to die on the streets because I'm queer. I worked at a homeless shelter and came out as a she, they, non-binary, gender fluid individual. I told them she, they. It's no longer she, her, she, they. And then I was fired. There were a lot of mixed opinions on the legalization okay. of drugs, but the impact on downtown Portland was unavoidable. Hey. Hey. Coming on Word. All right. While everyone else was busy getting high, Kevin wanted to show me another camp where someone tried to kill him. Here a few weeks ago, and there was a very unhappy person who tried to physically assault us who was okay. living here. So that's why I was just saying be a little mindful okay. of that. So look at that. You see those two propane tanks? Oh, yeah, and that's what causes the tent fires. Got it. And the explosions. Hi there. Good to meet just you. just wanted to learn more about this crisis and kind of where we went wrong. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different steps to that okay. <laughs> issue. Complex. Yeah, like, like, you know, every other 
person that walks by is asking for Betty or whatever. And Got it. Or blues. Do you feel safe out here? Lately, not so much anymore. Okay. I hear and why is that? There's stories about violence against women. Full assault and that sort of thing? Or? Well, not just that, like murder, actually murder. Oh, murder, okay. If we were to go out to where we went earlier today at night, what would we hear? What would we see? You're going to hear screams, usually sexually assaulted. Okay. You know, I interviewed a homeless guy just a couple days ago. It says, I hear Yo, blood curdling screams every night. And the most terrifying thing is when the screams abruptly stop. There is a known serial rapist that has been going to 10 to 10 at night, raping as many women as he can. I've interviewed five different women mm -hmm. raped by the same person in the same area. And the police haven't done anything about it? Well, none of the women have pressed charges because they're scared he uh, will kill them. His nickname is the Viper. Life seemed harsh and dangerous for the homeless people in downtown Portland. But without reliable housing Viper. to go back to, reporting certain criminals means they'll have to return back to camps to face those who assaulted them in the first place. But what about the homeless people who have moved to the outskirts of Portland? What's going on here? Well, this is the infamous long line of RVs. We're going to be able to count at least 100 of them. Yeah, yeah. look at all these RVs. Where are the services to help He's these people? There. The fact that there's families out here stuck in RVs in the middle of summer is just really unacceptable. As we drove past hundreds of RVs with homeless families living in cars, I realized that homeless people were living anywhere here to survive. There was a, a couple families living in these tunnels that kind of go underground Portland. Okay, but even among the homeless, hierarchies, status, and power have developed in unexpected ways. All right, we've made it. Right across the way, these are million dollar condos. It's where the homeless live and they have the identical view. It's really incredible architecture. Anybody home? Hello? Anybody home? Hello? So no one's home? Probably not. Is it risky for us to be here? Well, yeah, I don't want to invade their space too much. There's I... like a machete and an axe right there. All right, let's get out of here. And they've kind of finessed the system by not buying a million dollar property over here and just, you know, building one instead. So this is literally yeah, tens so of thousands of pieces of oh, driftwood, nice. wood, and someone has tunneled in and there's a camp inside of here. Whoa, that's crazy. And they have boats right here to go on the water and explore. This is, would be like a 600 foot one bedroom apartment. So how many people do you think live in these communities with max capacity? I believe about 15. 15, so this is truly the upper elite, the Bill Gates of the homeless out here. Full on mega mansion, bike in there. Mayor presumably of this community. And what makes this extra special is he's the only one with a pier. Oh, it's so, beautiful. So, this place right here, pristine, beautiful. And then a nice access point to a nice little ocean view. The detail, Boy. look at the bricks. Oh my god, you're right. That's detail, that's incredible. This is crazy. It's very creative what they've done out here. Sure. These are humans. It doesn't matter who you voted for. Can't we all work together? <laughs> Holy fuck, you scared the shit out of me, dude. Say if you want real change, okay, vote okay. differently. Yeah. Vote for the candidates, vote for the people with common sense ideas, the ones yeah. actually make a difference. So how could anyone watching help you on your mission? Well, um, I have a Twitter page, okay. Kevin V. Dahlgren, or just type Kevin Dahlgren and homeless and you're gonna find me. And then uh, truthonthestreets.org is my website. Okay. And of That's course, cool. then I have a YouTube channel called Truth on the Streets. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks brother, appreciate it. Kevin is my favorite dude ever and is helping make a real change. Can we help him get to 100,000 subs and help him save the city of Portland? Thanks guys, love you all. He's stuck out there in Portland, huh? And you go, man, should probably look into this. Yeah, I'm going to do another one.